you're looking for a movie night to Lady and the Tramp, you're in the right place. Because tonight on my channel, I am planning a Lady and the Tramp movie night filled with dinner, drinks, and dessert, as well as a craft that you can do with your kids, whether it's for Valentine's Day or any time that you just wanna have fun with them. So stay tuned, I'll show you exactly what I do coming up in a second. Hey everybody, it's Bethany here with Mommy's Movie Magic and welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss a movie night that I put out every week. Every Friday I come out with a new movie night that's themed with dinner, drinks, snacks, crafts. So if that interests you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button uh, so you don't miss out on a movie night. So this week we're doing Lady and the Tramp and I am excited to bring to you all of the fun that we have. So let's get into it. It wouldn't be a Lady in the Tramp movie night without spaghetti and meatballs, so there's our main course, as well as dog bone breadsticks, which are Tramp's favorite treat, Italian ice for dessert, and our La La Lu Star Sweeper drink for our drink. I like to start my meatballs off with a pound of ground beef and a pound of ground sausage, and I add to it some chopped onions and garlic, a half a cup of Parmesan, a half a cup of breadcrumbs, some salt and pepper, about four tablespoons of fresh chopped parsley, and two eggs. And then I mix it up with my hands. Most of it seems gross, but it's really the best way to go about it. And I'll spray my pan with some olive oil. And I roll each one up with my hand. And then I roll up all of my meatballs. I preheat my oven to 400 and I bake them for about 20 minutes. I also like to flip them halfway in between baking, which is at 10, the 10 minute mark, so that they can brown on both sides. The first thing I did was get ready for my sauce. I diced up my veggies. I used a, an onion. I diced up some mushrooms. Some red pepper, I even did zucchini where I used on a cheese grater and I grated up my zucchini that way. Then I shredded up some carrots. And please tell me I'm not the only crazy one who dices up baby carrots because they're too lazy to go to the store and I already have baby carrots. Tell me in the comments down below. And I minced up some garlic and added it to my second bowl. So my first bowl I have my mushrooms and my onions because we're going to add those in first. And then the rest of my veggies went in the second bowl. So now we're going to head over to the stove where I went ahead and already put olive oil in the bottom of our pan. And I poured in my onion and mushroom mixture, and we want to make sure that those are nice and soft first. And then we added in the rest of our veggies, and then we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of our ingredients. So we had a can of crushed tomatoes, and our diced tomatoes. I had a can of tomato paste balsamic vinegar, fresh parsley, all of our spice mixture, which I'll include down below, and brown sugar. And then I brought that to a boil, and then we just wanna let it simmer for as long as you possibly can. The longer you let it simmer, the more those flavors will meld together, and it will be amazing. And once you bring it down to a simmer, that's when we add in our meatballs and let it all simmer together for a few hours. Okay, so right now we're gonna get ready and make our Italian ice, and I have two little helpers with me today, and they're excited to make our Italian ice homemade. Okay, are we ready to make it? Yeah! All right, so first we're gonna start with three cups of halved strawberries. The strawberries I pre-sliced, so I'm gonna have my daughter Alex go ahead and pour those in for me. Yep, go ahead. Awesome. They all in there? Good. Yeah. All right, and then next we're gonna add two tablespoons of sugar. So Olivia's gonna add that in. 
careful. <laughs> there we go, <laughs> good helper. <laughs> All right, Alex is gonna do my next one, which is a tablespoon of lemon juice. Awesome. And the last ingredient here is we're gonna add in two tablespoons of honey. So we're gonna dump that in. We're actually gonna use this little spatula here and make sure that we get it all out of there. It's having a hard time coming out of there, huh? <laughs> yeah. So. I think it's scared. <laughs> it's scared? Oh my goodness. All right, and next we're gonna add in, whose turn was it last? Me, Gloria's turn was last. Okay, now it's that. Alex's turn, so you get the last one. We're gonna dump in two cups of ice. Awesome job. Can I okay. do the next one? Yes, you can do the next one. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this lid on top and we're gonna blend it up in our blender. Uh, is this it? Press the power button right there. Awesome. And press this number one right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can you press it off? Yeah. All right, that was loud, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's okay. So now we're gonna add in our last cup of ice now that that's all, ooh, that looks good. So Olivia gets to add in our one cup of ice in our last one. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and pour that in there. Okay. Got it. Whoa! Woo! <laughs> I'll put this one in. Flying ice everywhere. All right. Then we're gonna put the lid back on top. Cover your ears, Olivia. Can I press, press the power button? <laughs> Woo! All right, you guys can turn it off. Perfect. <laughs> good job, girls. Our Italian ice all blended up in here. We're gonna get our shallow pan. This is maybe about inch, inch and a half high, but it doesn't matter, it's ever easier that you guys have at home. So we're gonna take our Italian ice. Mm. It smells good. I know it does, doesn't it? Can I smell it? And we're gonna pour Ooh, it out. It smells so good. We're gonna use this and spread it out nice and thin all over can here. Do it? Yeah, can you can do it. Can. All right, girls, now it's time to put it in the freezer. Oh, yay. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so once our slush is all put in our pan, we're going to make room in the freezer here, and we're gonna stick our slush in for 30 minutes. After our 30 minutes is up, we're gonna come in with a fork and scrape up our slush mixer. It just helps it freeze a little better, and we're gonna flatten it back out and let it freeze. I forgot to post this when I first took these out, but I made two of these batches. I made one pineapple, and I made another strawberry. I made the pineapple right after we made the, uh, the strawberry one. So when you take them out, at first you're gonna have to let them sit for about 10 minutes before you can do anything with them. Because when you take them out, you can't do anything with it. This one's a little more, but you can't really scrape it and scoop it out. So you need to let these sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, and I'll come back in 10 minutes and show you guys um, why you need to let it sit. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes, and as you can see, it's a little softer and soupier. See, I can chomp away at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scoop out. Actually, I'm gonna start with this side first. See how nice that scoops out into there now. I'm gonna pull that over, make a scoop into there. Then I'm gonna come on the other side and grab my scoop. At this point, we are ready to get our dog bone breadsticks ready. So I took my pre-refrigerated uh, pizza dough that I bought at the store and I rolled it out into, mm, I'll say roughly a rectangle. I'm not so good at getting things to be in the shape they're supposed to be. Uh, but I got it roughly into a rectangle <laughs> and roll it out as much as I can. And then I sliced it up into 12 roughly even pieces of, uh, of pizza dough. And from here, I took one end and tied it literally into a knot so that it's going to look like a dog bone when we're finished. So you have your one knot here, as you can see, and on the other side, I'm gonna just go ahead and do the same exact thing. And there you have your dog bone. So I went ahead and did that to all 12 of my dog bones. so that they all now look the same. Then they're ready to go in the oven at 375 for about 12 to 15 minutes.
night was the star sweeper drink. I filled my glass up with some ice and I got my cherry seven up out and I filled it up pretty much to the top. I wanted to leave some room so that we can put in our raspberry sherbet. Mm. And I topped it off with some cherry seven up so that we fill it up almost to the top. And then I added our whipped topping to the very top of it. And then just for some added fun, I added some sprinkles to the top that were perfect for Valentine's Day. And there you have an easy, beautiful drink ready to go for Lady and the Tramp. I don't know why my favorite part was decorating the table. It was so simple and easy, but I loved it. I found this tablecloth at Walmart for just under $4 and I threw it over the table. And then I had these roses that I just got for my birthday and I put them as the centerpiece. And then I found these big tall candles that I had in the basement. Okay, so we're sitting down, we're gonna start our craft and our, the girls decided that they wanted to do a painting project. What we're going to make actually is spaghetti and meatball necklaces. So what we're gonna do is the girls have these pasta shells. I just had penne pasta, so I made it easy. I put out some red paint that we're gonna paint on our pasta shells to make it look like our spaghetti sauce. So the girls are gonna get started. We're gonna go ahead and paint our pasta and we'll see you guys in a little bit. This part may be required for just an adult to do, or at the very least under adult supervision. So I know I showed you guys in the first part where we were doing ours that I used yarn, but I actually went with needle and thread, as you can see. I couldn't get the yarn and any needle to go through the pom-poms quite right. Just the needle and thread just seemed to work so much better and held up well through all of this. So all I did was just uh, alternate going between a meatball and one of the girls' pasta paintings and I just alternated until I got to all of them pretty much. And at the end I cut it off and I just tied the strings together and it was perfect. everybody I think that's it for me today I hope you enjoyed and got some inspiration out of today's movie night again don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications leave me a comment below if you plan on doing this movie night maybe you've done it before what have you done I love hearing from you guys leave your comments what kind of things do you do to make it special for your family because this is what made it special for my family so next week I'll see you guys with my next movie and thanks again for joining me on mommy's movie magic